Good morning and welcome to a very interesting topic and this is myocardial infarction, very important topic and uh, so this is what we'll be discussing. This is like a brain map. So myocardial infarction or the heart attack and in that we will be discussing the angina pectoris, that is how it really starts. The types of angina pectoris, that is stable and stable prince metal. Then we will be talking about the pathology part, what are the various types, risk factors. Then we will be talking about signs and symptoms, how to diagnose. We will be looking at the lab diagnosis. We will also be looking at the ECG and then what should be the basic treatment. We will be watching histological changes, complications, right. So that is how we will be, we'll be discussing the myocardial infarction in its totality, right. This is the point from where we will start, okay. So, let's start straight away. So, starting with, because this is a pretty long topic, right? And, and actually, say, you'll be coming across so many interesting concepts. So, here it is the angina pectoris. Angina pectoris. Angina means angier. Angier means it is strangulation, strangle, right? As if, as if gala davana is strangulation. So, and strangulating what? Strangulating the chest. So as if the python, right, he is winding around the person and then the way he compresses, that is the strangulation. That's the feeling. That's the pain. So in Latin, it is angier. Angier is strangle, right? So this is the pain. Angina pectoris, that's the beginning. So this is the pain which is because of reduced blood flow. When there is blood flow, when the blood flow is decreased, it leads to lack of oxygen, right? And that leads to ischemia to the heart muscle. So that's why we always say that angina pectoris is what whenever there is pain on the left side right left side of the chest and then say if it is ruled otherwise right else this is like a first cry. This is the first cry of the heart right first cry of the heart that heart is telling that something is not okay. Now we'll be dividing into several parts so that we are crystal clear when we are dealing with the patient. So these are the types. One is stable, second is unstable, third is prince metal, right? Because these are the things which will late, which can later develop into a massive myocardial infarction. Starting with, this is the stable one, right? Things which are pretty clear will we'll take it a bit fast so that we can spend good time on, on those lab tests, etc., on the ECGs because they are like very, very interesting and very precise, right? So here is the stable angina. It is also called as chronic angina, right? This is the most common. What happens? Say this is, this develops when there is, now look at this. This develops when there is more than 70% of stenosis. Look at this, 70%, that means till this is the caliber of the coronary artery and till it is reduced by 70%, right, 70% reduction, till that point the heart survives, right, there is no indication. So this is the thing, this is so dangerous, right, and that's what is called as the coronary atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis means this is blocked by the plaque. Right. We'll see what is plaque, right? But you can say that, think it like if in a cross section, I'm good, Ankit. Thank you. So this is the plaque, right? I always say this plaque is, we'll see that what are the things which will, which can lead to plaque. So all those insults to the body, they lead to formation of the plaque, right? This one, this. And we'll, we'll look at even its parts, but the thing is, the effect is there is decrease in the blood flow and that decrease in the blood flow is the first cry of the heart. Now here it is that even if there is 70% of the reduction, right, pain goes away with rest when the patient takes rest and the pain goes away. This is the point when they, may, they start taking the things lightly. If it is going back, going away with the rest, but it, if it is coming back on exertion, right, Beware. This is the first step, right? So that's why be extremely careful on these two things. This is the reason when it is said that if you run a marathon, right? If you run a marathon, right? You don't need health certificate. You don't need fitness certificate because in marathon, 
when you are running it all right all these things they are taken care of by itself because then coronary arteries they should really pump the blood right very effectively so that heart keeps on running at such high pace for such a long duration right so that's why say fitness will be playing such a major role right as we'll see just after some time so here it is right here is our explanation of the plaque right so what plaque is now see this plaque is it has got two parts two components one is the soft component second is the hard fibrous component so that fat cholesterol protein wbc calcium all those things collectively right they lead to formation of this plaque right the wall right from one of the wall right it starts rising this is the soft part but it is covered by hard fibrous capsule and it it takes time to develop it is never instant right it takes years and years but it is a gradual process right now how how important it is to see that we have to look at the layers of the cardium layers of the heart muscle this is endocardium myocardium and the epicardium right endocardium is inside myocardial is in the middle that is the muscle thickness and the epicardium right epicardium would be the outside right or the outermost and endo endocardium would be the innermost and it is the myocardium now th here is the coronary artery this coronary artery which is which will be passing through passing through the myocardium which will be passing through the myocardium and will be supplying blood oxygen to the inner layers right everywhere it will supply now th see this thing if if the inner layer if this one is not getting the enough blood so that is called as the sub endocardium ischemia makes sense right sub sub endocardium ischemia now this artery because this coronary artery it has to pass through the thickness of the myocardium there is no big rocket science because instantly you will say okay, yes it is the left ventricle which is having the thickest of the muscle that's the reason left ventricle would be more involved into infarction as compared to the right ventricle left ventricle would be more involved as compared to right ventricle because left ventricle is thickest thickest so those coronary arteries they have to really pass through those muscles so that's the reason that this will be more involved first you will very rarely in fact you won't see right atrial enlargement right atrial uh, infarction right it is usually not seen because the wall itself is so thin so usually it is not seen but sub, sub endocardium ischemia right in case of left ventricle yeah that is that is more common right now what would happen this whenever there is ischemia right whenever there is ischemia it will release two things there will be release of adenosine and bradykinin both of them they give pain right adenosine and bradykinin both of them they give pain so there is pain sensation right now this pain sensation that is a sort of chest pain right that is a sort of chest pain but when we say chest pain it is also there would be also the referred pain right there would be referred pain and this referred pain would be classical left arm left jaw left shoulder and it can go even in the back it can go even in the back right all due to because the dorsal root ganglia the supply is same it is because of the same dorsal root, root ganglia so that is what is called as the referred pain the pain is at one point but because when it is it is this pain when it is carried to the brain because of the common dorsal root ganglia wherever it is supplying so there also there is feeling of pain and that is what is called as the referred pain yeah and this is the radiating pain right this is a radiating pain especially if it is going in jaw right very very important right if it is going in jaw right arm and and then uh say scapular region right also remember i, I i'll write it over here the scapular region 
right? The pain in the scapular region that is also very vital, right? So do take that. In in other words, everything surrounding the heart, right? So left shoulder, right? The chest pain, left shoulder, left arm, scapular region, back, and the and the jaw, and the jaw, right? So this is these are the things which we'll see. We are dealing with right now angina, right? We have not yet touched the full-fledged infarction. So that's why this is just ischemia. There is a lack of blood supply. Now, moving on to the ECG. For ECG, remember one thing. As the intensity grows, as the condition worsens, this ST segment, it starts rising. Higher the ST segment, bad is the condition, right? So think it like the beginning normally. The ECG changes, the ST depression, that's the beginning. This leads to this conclusion that there is subendothelial ischemia. There is lack of blood, lack of oxygen, right? Lack of oxygen. So that ST segment, right? So this is the QR, QR is for rising wave, S is for depressing wave, right? Or the sinking wave, this is the T. And this is the portion which we are talking about, this portion, this portion. This ST segment, right? This ST segment, it goes below. It is depressed, right? What to do? Always keep this nitroglycerin, right? Or I say like this, say tablet, sorbitrate, sorbitrate and tablet aspirin. The cost of these tablets means it's not even 50 rupees. They are that cheap, right? Always there would be long expiry. Right? Keep these tablets always, always at home. The reason is, in case if anything goes wrong, right, to any of the member of the family, right, you hardly get a window of about 30 minutes. The window is of 30 minutes. Now, within 30 minutes, reaching to the hospital means calling the ambulance or taking that person into car, reaching to hospital and then starting with the, with the treatment, right, 30 minutes is a pretty, pretty, small window if these things are given means straight away tablet sorbitrate right under the tongue sublingual and aspirin it is to be chewed immediately chew it right it can be even two tablets are given no problems but straight away from 30 minutes the window increases to about three hours now three hours is a decent time right within three hours so one can easily reach so that's why these are lifesaver. It is not costing even 50 rupees, but so important, right? Okay. We move on to the next one. This is unstable angina. We talked about first one was the stable angina. Stable angina, right? Do remember that it, it, it gets relieved at rest, but comes back on exertion. Over here, unstable angina, right? Unpredictable type of acute coronary syndrome. Right? The reason is, it occurs even at rest. Now, this is bad, right? It occurs even at rest. I was talking about one of my friend, right? I, I just posted also one of my very good friend passed away. Now, unfortunately, what really happened is that he started get, getting this pain. He thought okay, it is acidity, this, that, everything. He took some, some eno and he took some, uh, say, antacids. He waited, waited, waited. And then, then he thought, okay, okay, let me go to... Uh, the doctor who is just opposite the same building, right? He was the bank manager. So he, he, there was no lift. So he went two floors up, right? Two floor stairs. He went by stairs. He reached to that place and over there only he collapsed, right? See this, these things are so bad, right? So when the pain is more than 20 minutes, right? When it is more than, more than 20 minutes, don't take chance, don't take chance and well because this is a public platform i cannot cannot say something because of so many restrictions but uh, i would just say all of you must have watched the video of pfizer right pfizer ceo right pfizer ceo when the reporters they are asking them about the efficiency of the vaccine which they created right can't say much but you must watch that video you will get it easily Right. And this is the thing that rate of heart attack, young heart attacks, they are increasing so much. So, and, and the solution is keep yourself fit. 
simply, right? So we'll talk about it more. Relieved by sublingual nitroglycerin, but not fully, right? So this is occurring at rest. Forget about the exertion. This is occurring even at rest. So very vital, very vital, right? Now in this, what happens is that complication. So this was, this was a plaque, right? This was a plaque. In plaque, the fibrous capsule, right? This was the fibrous capsule, the second part. This is the first part, which is the soft part. This fibrous capsule, it breaks, right? And then that releases, that leads to release of thrombus formation. So those clots, once they are released, right, they can lodge anywhere. What happens now? Now the situation is worsening. ST segment was depressed from depression. Now it starts elevating. So this is the elevation, right? This is the ST segment elevated. This is the ST segment depressed, right? So this one is the ST segment depressed. This one is elevated. Plus the T wave is inverted. So if we really draw it further, this T wave is inverted, this T wave, right? So normal ECG is P, Q, R, S, and then the T, right? Watch for that this segment, that is the ST segment, and watch for this, that is the T wave. ST segment, it goes up, T wave goes down, right? T wave goes down. When you see this, if someone tells that, okay, I'm having chest pain you straight away go for ecg don't go for any of the lab test first thing which should be done is the ecg because on ecg you will be able to see some of these changes either the st segment the moment you see that st segment is affected right it is very vital very vital now at this point if you send his blood for even the cardiac biomarkers right you won't find anything that right? no card cardiac biomarkers are elevated what are these cardiac biomarkers? Well, we'll see them in more detail, but this is lactate, dehydrogenase, troponin, and this is creatine kinase MB, right? This is muscle binding. All these, this CKMB, CKMB, troponin 1, LDH, these are all normal, right? But you'll start finding the changes into ECG. Why they should be normal? Because they are the cardiac biomarkers. That means in case of heart attack, in case of cardiac muscle injury, they should be elevated. Yes, they will be elevated, but because they take some time, right? This is a chemical process, so it takes some time. It is not instant. So in case of unstable angina, the first thing which is, it is the ECG, right? Now we move further. The third stage, the third part, this is what is called as the prinzmental angina. Prince metal angina, in this case also, there is angina at rest and it starts coming in cycles. Right? It starts coming in cycles, one after the another. And this is because by the vasospasm. So there is contraction of vascular smooth muscles. This is the cause. So in this case, right, once again, say calcium channel blockers. In calcium channel blockers, yes, we know that yesterday when we were talking about Pharmac, Right, calcium plus 2, that is square, 2 square. So this is type 4, this is type 4, type 4. So we write it like IV, verapamil, right? This is like this. So that is verapamil, right? And the deltiasm. These are the two very important drugs for the prince metal angina. That is when it is because of the vasospasm, right? We won't be giving propranolol important we won't be giving propranolol because in case of propranolol that is a beta blocker and in beta blocker there were two types selective and non-selective and we know it very well that when we talk about selective so then selective is what selective will be acting on beta 1 while non-selective will be acting on beta 1 beta 2 right so beta 1 this is what we want beta 1 beta 2 this beta 2 so it is as acting on the blood vessels right and these are adrenergic adrenergic means what will they be doing adrenergic right adrenergic that means fight and flight right so then beta then these receptors are stimulated so it will increase the heart rate right it will it will lead to say all those bronchodilatations right because we need more air more blood blood pressure is increased we want to fight that's why beta blocker 
we want to block them when we block them so it will lead to everything would be say coming down but what really happens that over here when you are you are talking about the heart so heart rate slows down because it will it will be leading to say decrease in the av conduction right it will also act on the muscle so that that will also slow down so the entire cycle slows down but over here what will happen to the lungs right in the lungs right it will lead to spasm bronchospasm because they are non selective also it will act on blood vessels which will lead to vasospasm right because when these beta 2 are stimulated it will lead to dilatation of blood vessels but now they will go for vasospasm so this is this will worsen the situation we don't want that so remember you will be in treatment part we'll see that we'll be using selective will be sil using selective beta blocker and we won't be selecting the non we won't be uh, using non selective beta blocker so propranolol we won't be using another one was timolol right timolol no will not be using even timolol right we remember non selective means everyone everyone means team timolol and professionals right propranolol so we will not be using these two okay one another thing is because of vasoconstriction say this is platelet thromboxane a2 right what exactly is this platelet thromboxane a2 now this is this is a sort of vasoconstrictor right now when we when we talk about see in this thromboxane a2 in in short we write it as txa2 txa2 right and and this is released by activated platelets right activated platelets so activated platelets they release this why simply they say that platelets come into picture whenever there is any of the bleeding and they want to con you want to make a clot right this is to form clot that's the purpose so the, as such it is a good thing but over here it can prove dangerous right and uh, one one more thing which which is like when we you know this is one the one of the thing is vasospasm there is one more thing that see there are alpha receptors also right alpha receptors alpha receptors now when you are blocking beta right so then those alpha receptors so they they become very happy they are like uncontrolled right no one can stop them and that one would lead to one one more thing and that is peripheral vasoconstriction peripheral vasoconstriction so that's the reason it can worsen the situation right because now you have stopped beta 1 beta 2 so the alpha they go uncontrolled right so they will be using their full strength for peripheral vasoconstriction because there is no one to tell okay, okay dilate there is no one right so that's why it will lead to vasoconstriction so all layers when we say right when we say sub endothelial that means it is the lowest innermost layer when all the layers of heart are affected that is a bad bad situation it is what is called as the transmural transmural ischemia and when there is transmural ischemia we understood it that way that in ecg as the ischemia increases that ht segment it is rising so over here this would be the state the st segment will definitely be elevated right now it happens like that some this is like a book picture it's classical exactly it appears like this but there there might be some variations right we'll see that why those variations it can really at times it occur occurs like this right it can occur like this or or very rarely it can even occur occur like this right all these are variations but one thing is very true that st segment elevation this is something which we see commonest right typical picture right we'll see some of the ecgs also so this is this is the typical picture why it really occurs like this acha now uh okay let's let me add one page Now see when we when we talk about when we talk about sorry when we talk about say 
the systems, right? There is a parasympathetic system and then there is a sympathetic system and in parasympathetic system, there is, right? We have got preganglionic and postganglionic. So in both the cases, there would be acetylcholine, which will be used. And in sympathetic, the preganglionic, it will use acetylcholine and the postganglionic that will be using the adrenaline, which is called as the epinephrine and norepinephrine, right? Epinephrine and norepinephrine. So these are the like neurotransmitters which are which are used. Now see, if we really focus only on our adrenergic receptors, right? Putting it into simply, these beta receptors they are so important. So just explaining this so that concept remains because this will be used again and again. So we have got beta one, we have got beta two, we have got beta three, right? Beta three. Beta 1, right, they will be into heart and kidneys, heart and kidneys. So, this is adrenergic. Adrenergic is what is for fight. We want to fight. When we want to fight, we should, we will tell our heart, okay, come on, beat fast, right? So, that is what beta 1 receptors will be doing. So, they will say to AV, right, increase AV, increased AV conduction speed, right? It will tell the heart muscles, okay, come on, contract fast. So, increase cardiac contractility. So, that's what really happens. It will even tell kidney, right? Renin angiotensin system, right? It will say, okay, release and it will lead to increase in the blood pressure. So, basically, this beta 1, when it comes into picture, right, it will act on heart and the kidneys. And in kidneys, those juxta glomerular cells, well, right, they will be coming into picture. And it final effect is, increase heart rate, powerful contraction and the increase in the blood pressure and yes because the cardiac output will increase so that also leads to increase in the blood pressure that is one right regarding the this beta 2 beta 2 will be present it will be present into the lungs and it will be present into the smooth muscles right smooth muscles right now what will happen in this case right those lungs right they will dilate right so that will lead to bronchodilatation yeah we we want more oxygen right so bronchodilation bronchodilate dilations and also those smooth muscles right they will they will relax so that will lead to vasodilation vasodilation and these these smooth muscles from the git perspective right git perspective they will also relax so it means that they will relax that means git function will not be function right because in peristalsis they have to contract so when we are fighting we won't say that yes i want to eat one pizza and then we'll fight no fight is fight right so this is the second part so that's the reason now we are clear that if if we are we want to restrict this beta 1 okay beta 1 don't work right so that heart cools down Right? There is decrease in the blood pressure. But beta 2, if we say, the beta 2 will say, okay, bronchodilatation, ulta, chalo, constrict, bad effect. Vasodilation, vasospasm, right? So that's the reason we want a selective beta blocker and we want to block only this. We don't want to block beta 2, right? Regarding the beta 3, just because it is part of it, that's why we are talking. Otherwise, it has got very little role into this. You'll find beta 3 at two major places. One is like say adipose tissues, right? Adipose tissues. And you will also find it in urinary bladder, right? Bladder or the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder. So what it will say? In both the cases, its normal function would be one, lipolysis lipolysis right and decrease urination right decrease urination oh makes sense because when we want to fight we need energy and we can't say that just right time please okay so now we move on to the pathology of myocardial infarction what really happens here it is there is a lack of oxygen rich blood Right, so there is death of myocytes. Remember, heart and brain, these two unfortunate areas of the body, right, 
once dead, they never come back. Right? Once dead, they are dead forever. So there is atherosclerosis. We saw that there is formation of plaque and then there is a clotting process and it leads to block. Right? It leads to block. Now when it leads to block, we said that there is ST segment elevation. Right? That's what we talked about. So here it is, there are two types. There are two types. One is ST elevation myocardial infarction. So that is S-T-E-M-I. Makes sense because there is a total block. Total block means this is, go this is going for full thickness. When it is going for full thickness, we call it what? We call it transmural, right? It is a full thickness ischemia. So it is a transmural. And in that transmural, there would be ST segment elevation, right? This would be leading to ST segment elevation. Okay, so instead of instead of this going like this, now this ST segment, right, it gets elevated. Now, as it will progress, it will be going even like this. That's what we saw, right, just before few minutes. So that is ST segment elevation. When we talk about this, that is non st elevation non st elevation mi myocardial infarction so that means there is a partial block and this partial block now we understand it very clearly this is subendocardial ischemia so this is not full thickness right so in that case there would be st segment depression right st segment depression so this is p this is q and and we'll see something like this or something like this right so that's these are the two important things full thickness it is st segment elevation partial thickness st segment depression right so that's the reason in this case this is non st here the st segment won't be elevated so that's why it is called as nst emi right ah, here are here are few of the examples see this is normal right i'll change that this is normal watch for subendocardial ischemia right over here see this is st segment goes down right there is ischemia but again st segment has not been elevated just the t wave is is inverted right t wave is inverted and then later on even st segment will go down but when it is full thickness, right, this is full thickness because this is transmural, right, full thickness. So, there is ST segment elevation, right. So, that's what is so important that this is leading to full thickness, right, full thickness is changing. On to the risk factors, right. Now, see the risk factors. After you will see that what are the complications of heart attack, right? You will find that these, these are the things which are avoidable. Because we can avoid these things because those complications, they will, be, they will be scary, right? And we'll be studying it in more detail. That it is not so that one person has suffered from the attack and then he has reached to the hospital and everything is fine. No, we'll be tracing him all the way for days and weeks together that what can really happen in the heart and then there are so many risks so many risks involved right and it's all natural no one in the world can can stop it right but these are avoidable smoking right very harmful high blood pressure do take care of it diabetes mellitus high blood sugar very dangerous obesity right see these things they can easily be easily be managed by a proper lifestyle right proper lifestyle you don't even i i give this example many a times that we don't put even ghatia kerosene into our bike or in our car why are a bike is so expensive car is so expensive so is your body faltu right your body is million and billion times costlier than that but still we put all kachras into that right because that burger that that we feel that it's so tasty but see today you'll see that what that can really lead to 
all those things, high cholesterol, right? Now, the one thing which I can bluntly say, right? I don't really, I'm not afraid to say that because there is a very good video also with me and even the reports are there that in India, all these companies, right? McDonald's and all those, right? If you really check the level of salt, the level of sugar, which they put into, into their, their things, right those their, their food products and then the monosodium glutamate all these things they are so much that the daily requirement of the salt is exceeded by five to seven times right five to seven times there is so much of sugar there is so much of salt so that things they they become very tasty and this monosodium glutamate too is like a killer there is a big difference between india and say usa we feel that it's the same company. No, company is same, but in India, our restrictions, they are not that high. So that's the reason the quality which we get, we might get the things which are tastier, but they are so injurious, right? And there is a wonderful video on it. I got that video also. And there are very good reports. And when it was asked, when the question, even in that video also, when the question was asked to their CEOs and CTOs, right, they were, they were unable to answer. Right. They just walked off from that party, right? That that party which was in Delhi, right? And when the reporters they reached to ask these questions, they walked off. The thing is, they don't care. They want business, right? They don't want you to be healthy. So that's why high cholesterol, right? They want that you be the couch potato. All ghatia advertisements, this media, they keep on showing you that aram se bethe and then having those chips and faltu things, right? It is so injurious right alcohol right all those advertisements which are shown right alcohol right as if as, as if it is it is very big achievement to have alcohol right all those things what happens right all these these otp channels they really show in one of the one of the videos one of the series i i it was shown that even the students of 10th and 12th standard right they were having alcohol now what message are they trying to give so it is like those save yourself and and then unnecessary stress unnecessary stress right? so much stress is imposed now see with stress nothing goes wrong right stress free operations you do it and you will be getting much better results right from the beginning that's what i say right from the beginning the day you take admission in medical college right forget rest of the world right focus on yourself and see what happens at the end of your mbbs you will be so happy with yourself absolutely stress free bindas will be sleeping happily for the whole night and still you will be reaching at a very good level right this is vital and and when i say these things right you'll find on my channel there is one one video also cigarette in my hand right the original video that is way back pretty old video uh, song right i created the video uh, from that song and plus modified the sound effects also but the line is cigarette the beginning is cigarette in my hand i felt like a man and the end is cigarette in my hand i am a dead man right this is what really happens so don't don't worry about don't worry much about anything right work systematically be a cool headed person right you'll feel that life would be much more beautiful because at times it happens that by the time when you start earning the health condition is so bad bad that you can't eat this thing that thing right you can't eat even good foods right because they'll say i'm having diabetes i'm having blood pressure all those things when the body is not supporting right the life is that money is of no use so do remember this right from the beginning study very properly that's the reason that i know even if you are in first mbbs i'm teaching you those things which are part of medicine which are part of pharmacology no worries you your brain is much powerful right you can absorb you can understand much better right and and yes i i would never ever discourage you right yesterday the mail which was sent i don't know whether that girl is here or not but the thing is don't worry much right if you are having any problem yes you send a mail to me no problems that's fine right i'll talk to you but don't be depressed 
right? By by if someone is telling that you are not fit for this particular, that is for the medical, right? You can't be a doctor. No one has got authority. You don't give your remote control to your policy, so then how can you give your life's remote control in someone's hand? Don't worry much. Right? The second part, which is non-avoidable, in case if there is family history, so then be cautious. Be cautious. Right? It's not so that you have to just think of that, no, now there is it's end of the world no but be cautious be be remain fit right that fitness is vital and as carry males right male cannot cry and and they just keep on storing all those sorrows all those frustrations into their heart and a female female to yaar unko to aadat hai rone ki but yes this is a proven thing that males they suffer from heart attack much much more as compared to females hardly you will find that any female has suffered from heart attack you go to cardiology you'll find that almost all are males right very rarely you'll find females females you'll find very few right so there is nothing wrong no need to become sheer right kya re main to kabhi rota hi nahi why not yaar you are not a robot right so that's completely fine so things though this is just one page but i feel like this is a very important page so so please right and and say if you are a smoker if you are consuming alcohol and if you want to just empty your heart send a mail to me right i'll definitely reply to such mails at a very top priority okay sign and symptoms acute chest pain right this is the beginning acute chest pain which is lasts lasting for more than 20 minutes it's a retrosternal pain and this pain which is radiating to left arm and left jaw and left shoulder and going back the classical thing right and c7 to t5 these are the areas these are the roots right one word and that one word is that is gabrat this is the feel right this is the feel when suddenly person feels matlab ghabrahat honi shuru ho there is a pain but at the same time there is so much of ghabrahat and something is going wrong right this is a very scary very scary feeling right now is your patient having dyspnea difficulty in breathing feeling tired right just thoda chala baith gaya and then associated with nausea associated with vomiting now see these are bad things right there is feeling of fullness as if there is indigestion and then he is perspiring heavy perspiration because of this and that is called as the diaphoresis why all these things are happening simply this is increased sympathetic activity right body is in is in emergency so entire sympathetic system is now fighting right so there is dyspnea fatigue nausea vomiting right everything has started let's go for the diagnosis right in diagnosis lab test we start with the lab test now these lab tests they are crucial if you really see them you will find that just few of the markers and they will give you as if what's happening inside right so these are called as the cardiac markers in cardiac markers ckmb right this ckmb this is non specific first thing first thing i tell you this is non specific now should you do it well i'll tell you right but this is non specific when we say non specific that means this creatin kinase it is not present only in muscle it is also present in skeleton so if there is skeletal muscle damage then also this can rise right though the normal range is 5 to 25 international units per liter but this is important but do keep in mind that just ckmb is higher so don't jump on the conclusion right so this is ckmb is creatine kinase muscle binding or the myocyte binding right this b is for binding b is for binding now similarly you will be when we'll be talking about 
it's a brain so there is ckbb also that is creatine kinase brain binding right so but that is a different thing the second one second cardiac marker is lactate dehydrogenase right ldh1 so that's normal range 140 to 280 uh, units per liter and the third one is troponin 1 that is 0 0.04 nanogram per ml now this is this one is very sensitive right it is very sensitive and this is very specific very specific so what what's the importance of these things to see this first let's understand that why it should really occur right so this is like a normal myocyte right so normally this ldh and ckmb and protein they, they all are inside the myocyte right in in myocyte so they don't come out but they appear in blood when there is injury right so normal in normal cases if we really check it they, they won't be appearing in blood but with injury right when there is injury injury when these cells they break right they appear in blood makes sense right they appear in blood so this is the logic behind that why they should really appear in blood and normally they don't because they are packed right now ldh1 ckmb and troponin 1 by the way this the ckmb in some of the labs you will find that it is they they write it as cpk right it doesn't matter much it is it is one and the same thing cpk mb right cpk mb huh? yeah so cpk mb this is phospho right this is phospho so creatinine phosphokinase myocyte binding right so, so they both are same they both are same troponin 1 when we said that this is more specific yeah thank you so troponin 1 is more specific now let's let's figure out that all of them what exactly they do see let's start with ldh right let's start with ldh ldh rises very rapidly right ldh is lactate dehydrogenase right this is lactate dehydrogenase dehydrogenase now it rises very rapidly but it falls also very early right so very rapid very and the thing is it is not specific to heart rate, heart muscle right it is not specific to heart muscle and say from lymphatics it goes to the venous system and then it goes into the iv blood that's what really happens uh have have you studied general anatomy of circulatory system lymphatic system uh yeah there is there is general anatomy of circulatory and lymphatics it has been discussed nervous not yet nervous not yet but yeah in in part of the nervous system we have taken action potential etc it was taken sympathetic parasympathetic what was taken right after this we'll be taking the respiratory system and once the respiratory system is complete then we'll be going for rest of the topics of thorax and once the thorax is complete we'll be going for neurophysiology right we'll be going in depth of full-fledged neurophysiology and in neurophysiology also we'll be coordinating it with the clinical medicine in which we'll be discussing there would be one day for ct scan one day for mri that is about how, what exactly you are supposed to see the way we discussed x-ray chest right in in one of the sessions same way we'll be dealing with ct mri so that by the by the end of say six months you'll be ready with almost everything you'll be knowing that in ultrasound what you're supposed to see in ct if someone gives so then what exactly which values are to be seen in mri whether you suggest someone mri or ct or well you'll suggest someone say pat scan yes or no so that's how we'll be going right okay now see yeah, troponin is this related to calcium proportion? Yeah, it is. It is. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. But say today we are watching that this is a patient, right? And and its values when they come in your hand, right? Sometimes what happens? We are so much theoretically oriented, but when it really comes to 
when when the patient comes with the reports in his hand we fail to see some things this is what you see when the patient's report come right lab reports come because they will be coming in the form of pages and there will be numbers so watch for the first thing troponin watch for the troponin because troponin is something it will rise within say 2 to 4 hours right it will rise and it will reach to its peak in 2 to 4 hours so that means the patient has been admitted right at say 8 o'clock in the night by 10 or 11 if you check is the dystroponin will be skyrocket right at the same time you give ckmb now you'll find that ckmb that has that is increased but it is not that significant right it is not that significant because the thing is troponin is very specific but as we said that troponin why it is important because peak will be at two to four hours and then within one day it would drop though it would be higher but it will continue to remain at that level for seven to ten days right this is the classical pattern of troponin what happens to ckmb now ckmb initially will find this is we initially will find with that that it is it is not that high but by the end of 24 hours on the one day today the patient has been admitted at eight o'clock in the night next day you send the blood at eight o'clock in the night right after 24 hours you'll find that ckmb is high but then on the next day right that is after two days if you see it has come back to normal this is normal right it will come down so it rises and then it comes down still we'll keep on doing this ckmb because that day if we find another peak right after 48 hours if you find another peak beware this is another attack which is now in progress right so if there is a second peak second peak so that means it is another mi and yes this is very common right it is exactly like earthquake right after shocks there are many so that's the reason that post mi right there can be so many complications and we'll see those complications with the reason in depth okay so here it is now how to how to see you now you know the ecg part right so in ecg what we see we see st elevation yes there would be q waves inverted t wave and then there would be left bundle branch block right this is left bundle branch block okay uh, i think we have not talked about left bundle branch block no? uh, uh, let me add one page and it's very easy it's very easy yeah so here is sa node to av node to now there is a right bundle left bundle and Purkinje fibers it goes this is left this is right whenever there is earthquake and if something happens to the building it will automatically be affecting even its electrical system wires etc correct the wires will also be broken the same thing is over here when there is there is left ventricle is commonly an affected so it will affect even this electrical system also right so there would be partial or massive damage to the left bundle of his right now when this thing occurs left bundle branch block right is normal right right is normal what would you really see in this ecg the first thing first what you will watch is that the qrs complex right that qrs complex that would be widened yes because this left now it is going slowly 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 so right has already contracted but left is going slow 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 so that qrs complex which was prepared because of the contraction of ventricle it would be elongated so qrs would be elongated by more than 120 milliseconds right 120 milliseconds so this is one second on v1 now see this is this is so easy 
That's the heart. That's the heart. This is right side. This is left side. Right. This left side is bichara weak. Right. So this right side will become the boss. So on V1, right, on V1, which is V1, V2, V3, V4, right, and V5, V6, that's how it goes. But from the V1 perspective, V1 will say that all the way, right, this, which is watching, watching the atrioventricular septum, AV septum, correct? We watch the AV septum. So in this case, you'll find that on V1, right, this portion, right, because for, for V1, though, it is like going away, right, you will find that in V1, there will be QRS will be not only wide, wide though we saw that, but it would be downwardly deflected, right, so QRS would be downward deflection, downward deflection, right, so I, I do have the ECG pattern. Let me let me show you. Just a minute. Mm. It's just one second. And, uh, and uh, here it is. Okay, here it is. This is what you get. On V1, flatten it. On V1, V1, see this is the downward deflection. And on V6, it would be up. Right? Because this is, this is like a right mass is over here, V1 is over here, so this thing will be going away. So that's why there would be a deeper. And on this side, and on this side, that is on the V6 side, right? See the pattern. See the pattern, right? This, 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 right? See this, this. So this is what is called as the M. And over here, it is called as the W. There won't be a single spike like this. That single spike occurs because both the right and left ventricles, they were contracting together. Right? But now there is discrepancy. So that's the reason we have got this W and the M. Right? I just remove this thing. So just mark this and this. This is L, B, B, B. Left bundle branch block. Reason? Yeah. Reason that electrical system is affected. Right? So see here, this is left ventricle, right? This is the left ventricle. This is right ventricle, not as much affected. And this is the right coronary artery. This one is the left anterior descending artery. And this is the left circumflex artery. Right? We, we discussed this thing in, in our anatomy. Right? So there is right coronary artery and then there is left coronary artery. Left coronary artery is divided into left anterior descending artery and then there is left circumflex artery. Right? So that's how they... So it is this LAD. LAD. And now you know that we watched even that coronary angiography. Correct? So in that, say this is LAD. You'll find that almost more in 40 to 50% of the cases this LAD is affected. Right? And then we have got the right coronary artery, 20 to 30 percent, and left circumflex, 10 to 20 percent. Right? When the right coronary artery is involved, remember it is supplying to SA node and AV node. So now those nodes are also affected. Right? So there would be arrhythmias. Correct? So that's what can occur. Now moving further. This one, when we say that there is ST elevation, ST elevation, right? that is one. So this means that as the ST segment starts elevating, this is leading to a bad area. But in which, which lead it is happening, right? in which lead it is happening. So see, when we say 3, lead 3, AVF and 2, 
that is how we see the heart from the inferior aspect inferior aspect correct that's how we see the heart from below okay. so that is when if we see these changes we we know that now it is the right coronary artery rca is involved so when the angiography is getting done right your focus would be because you have already seen the ecg and you know that in 3 avf and 2 right in lead 2 lead 3 and avf we found that st elevation is there so focus on rca definitely it will come out right similarly on the avl and i and and the one right avl and one lead one and avl if they are showing st segment elevation so this means it is the left circumflex artery which is involved because you are watching the heart from the left lateral aspect correct from the left lateral aspect so these are some important points now if you really want to localize right so this is this is like a key ecg localization of stem right that is st segment elevation myocardial infarction we talked about it so leads with st elevation and q waves see this makes complete sense in its easiest way v1 v2 v1 v2 shows enteroceptal enteroceptal right and in that case when it is enteroceptal led left anterior descending artery is involved correct v3 v4 v3 v4 as we are coming to the anterior aspect but this is anterior apical right anterior apical is because of the angle of the heart so this is when the distal led but basically led right that is involved v5 v6 when we go on the lateral side so this is anterolateral so that's where even the circumflex has come into picture so it is either led or lcx right we go to one avl right that's what we saw it over here right one avl so 100 percent now we are watching on absolute lateral side so in this case lcx right left circumflex is involved so that is good this is once again easy the inferior aspect that is 2 3 and avf from inferior aspect so 100 percent it is the rca which is involved right v7 to v9 v7 to v9 where are up to this point that we have seen up to v6 well v7 to v9 it is nothing but you keep on putting the electrodes so that they go into the posterior aspect so that is where the posterior descending artery the posterior part is involved right it can also occur so here it is right here it is so v1 v2 this was like enteroceptal this is the enteroapical and as we go from the lateral side and, and over here these are the posterior aspect posterior aspect right this is heart right if heart is here so obviously this region is anterior and this one would be the posterior part right so this is posterior so st segment elevation but where do we we are getting this is of prime importance right and obviously right arm left arm left foot right that is what is forming our einthoven's triangle and then you know Einthoven's triangle and then you know about the axis deviation right axis deviation left axis deviation how to measure right all those things which we have discussed during our ECG discussion right so this is how we'll be looking at it right that ST elevation but where regarding the treatment part right this is oxygen high pressure in acute attack this is super super important high pressure in acute attack right? the normal oxygen it won't function so many times in ambulance when the normal oxygen is given that's okay better than nothing but actually you require high pressure high pressure oxygen second powerful analgesics because the pain is bad it is so bad right so that's why morphine is given powerful anticoagulants yes when we when we say that it is the aspirin we, we take right aspirin so it is as good as anticoagulant right antiplatelet anticoagulant q 
keeps the blood thin. So, anticoagulants. Antiplatelets, aspirin, right? This is very good. And the clopidogrel, right? These are the medicines which are used. Next is beta blocker. In beta blocker, now that we have discussed, we have talked about it so much that this is metoprolol, right? The moment we say metoprolol, yes, we know that metoprolol is selective beta blocker, right? This is selective beta blocker, it, right? Selective beta blocker. So this is good, right? We won't be giving, we won't be giving propranolol, right? Propranolol, because propranolol is non-selective. Non-selective means it will be blocking beta 1 and beta 2 both, right? So, we don't want that. We won't be using timolol, right? Because again, that also, they both are non-selective. Both are non-selective. So, they will be blocking beta 1, they will be blocking beta 2. So, that's why we could keep a red mark. No, don't use, right? Don't use, right? Very important. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> the next is <coughs> the next is st is statins. Statins are see you want decreased production of cholesterol, right? Decreased production of cholesterol. So this is HMG COA. Reductase inhibitor. What exactly is this? See, extremely simple. This is nothing but it is precursor of cholesterol synthesis. This is precursor, right? When we say precursor, that means from this, from this cholesterol will be forming. We want to stop it. So obviously, we want to stop cholesterol synthesis. So this raw material itself should not be getting converted to cholesterol. So, this is HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. We want to stop this HMG-CoA reductase. Now, what this HMG-CoA reductase is? Not very difficult. This H is for hydroxy. M is for methyl, right? Very common word, methyl. And this G is for glutaryl 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 right coenzyme reductase ase means this is enzyme so what it will do it will lead to formation of what is called as the mevalonate right it will mevalonate that's what is in one of the process and then finally it gets converted into cholesterol so this is what we really want so that's why statins they are used right a very effective drug that is allorvastatin. This is allorvastatin. The name itself, statin, statin, right? It is allorvastatin, statin, which is restricting the cholesterol, right? So that is given. Yeah, from triglyceride levels, yes, it is. Because see, cholesterol, trig, all those, the lipid profile, this is the reason that lipid profile is so vital in, in a case of healthy person, right? Lipid profile, because as the lipid profile tells you that if, if the values are skyrocketing, yes, this is, this is what is happening inside the body. So you're right that uh, it is... It is not only from the triglycerides, but the complete lipid profile is important for this perspective. True. Now we see the evolution of MI. Evolution of MI is right from the first second what happens and then what happens as the things progress. Right. So here it is post MI. Right. Heart attack has come and this is 0 to 4 hours, initial hours. Right, You won't find much of the changes. It takes some time before the enzyme, they leak. Right, But then, what would start? It can, you can watch arrhythmias, heart failure and heart, the, the cardiac shock. Now, why it should occur? First, the heart, we are not giving oxygen to heart. Heart is not getting oxygen, so heart will go into the anaerobic mode. 
When it goes into the anaerobic mode, so that means because there is lack of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, so it will lead to increase in the lactic acid. Now the lactic acid is increasing, right? If there is decreased ATP, first and foremost thing, our all-time great sodium potassium ATPS pump, right? That would be affected because this is an active pump. This is a pump which keeps on working 24 by 7. That never stops for whole life. This is a pump which is utilizing almost 25% of our entire energy. 25% of the energy, so it is utilized by this pump. Now, ATP is the currency. ATP is not available, so this pump would be affected. When this pump is affected, this pump is doing what? That this is the cell, right? Sodium, sodium everywhere. Outside there is sodium. Potassium is inside. But still, against the gradient, or even if there is more sodium, it throws the sodium out, right? Three sodiums, they are going on. And two potassiums, they are going on. In. So that's how the entire thing is balanced. But this is what is done by the sodium, sodium potassium pump. Now this pump is not working. So now externally, right, that sodium, right, which was which was to be taken out from the cell, now intracellularly it stays. Right? Intracellularly, this sodium stays. Water always follows the sodium. Simple. Right, we, we saw that thing, the movement of the fluids, right? Water will say, Kya rahe, sodium is inside, chalo, chalo, inside and then neutralize it. So, so, water will start moving because water follows, water follows sodium. And that is what edema, edema, right? See, the first thing, edema. Second, externally, large amount of extracellular potassium, right? There is so much, potassium is a killer. Right, when it is in so much, which is called as the hyperkalemia, it will lead to arrhythmias. So, this is what really happens because, say, because of that lack of oxygen, right, anaerobic mode decreased ATP, sodium potassium pump is affected, and inside more potassium, more sodium, water goes in edema. Outside that potassium, which was to be thrown back into the cell, it is playing its game over here and leading to arrhythmia. And that, that is what leads to heart failure. Now, still, still, worst is yet to come. 4 to 24 hours. 4 to 24 hours. Now, this is what is called as the early coagulative necrosis. Now, the tissue starts dying. right? Tissue won't die bum in a single shot. right? It takes some time. Now, this is when there is a tetrazoleum stain. right? Tetrazoleum stain. So, this binds to LDH strongly. But in infarct portion, when there is the when the when the tissue itself has died, so they, it has lost its LDH. So there is no one over there. So here is a tissue, and if here is the infarct, this infarct is not having any LDH. This in fact is not having any LDH. So even if you try to stain this tissue with tetrazoleum, it won't be it won't be stained because we watch on histology slides only those things which are stained. If they are not stained, we don't see it. Right? So this scar, this scar tissue which has lost its LDH, so there won't be any binding and this portion would look pale. Would look pale, right? We'll just see it, right? Now, so we said that LDH1, CKMB, troponin 1, they spill out due to ischemic injury, right? We talked about it, that normally they are packed into the cell, but now due to injury, it is thrown out, right? <coughs> Sorry. So now there is hypoxia, right? Hypoxia. Hypoxia inducible factor, so HIF is released. HIF will trigger one another factor and that is VEG, a vascular endothelial growth factor that is released. That will lead to release of polymorphs, especially the neutrophils. Now, this is a normal process, right? This is a normal process that whenever there is injury, right, there would be increase in the polymorphs. So, how much time, right? It is like we are on 4 to 24 hours. So, 
by this time so we have done the angiography right angiography is done and we have put the stent also so things should be good right so when we found that okay here is here is the narrowing so we have we have just put a stent over there we have put a stent over there so that circulation can go good but remember what really happened over here it this this narrowing it has not happened in one day or one hour right it took long time so now the moment you do this is what is called as the reperfusion this is called as reperfusion because you have opened the road this reperfusion because you have put the stent right that reperfusion injury occurs what the blood which is blood is injuring infected area now because of stent the blood is going at a rapid pace right what would happen it will be carrying neutrophils right it will be carrying neutrophils neutrophils will use oxygen will lead to formation of reactive oxygen species reactive oxygen species and this will lead to damage this will lead to damage it occurs it occurs right so sometimes we have to you have to judge that how much is the importance that which area is to, or which artery is to be say where the stent is to be put still more is yet to come yes there is damage either way but see more damage is still yet to come that even after that's the reason that see post infarction right the life becomes miserable then they have to take care of so many things they have to take keep on taking so many medicines they have to keep on taking the utmost care of the heart and and that's what i said that it is scary right ne next three pages to literally dar jaoge that is this something what can happen to heart yes it can happen to heart now see the calcium right it leads to contraction right now there is lack of atp and there is damage so what happens is that those it contracts and and this leads to formation of contraction band necrosis because the tissue has been damaged so it won't relax right it won't relax so when it is not relaxed right so this is not relaxing because our horse is already tired not relaxing our horse is tired right because of the damage so that leads to this typical pattern that is what is called as the say these such bands they would start up occurring right so it has contracted but now it won't be relaxed and they will remain into that position right see there are so many over here see over here over here over here right see over here to it is so extensive so extensive see extensive here 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 right see as so that's that's what really happens the damage the damage is so bad after back to, back to normal after 1 to 3 days of the mi coagulation necrosis right now the coagulation necrosis starts because the tissue is damaged right and in pathology that that once the tissue is damaged so it it doesn't stop at that point right body would say the tissue is damaged it is of no use so i need to remove it and there starts and and obviously the raw materials they will start breaking nucleus right that will be converted into debris and those neutrophils will come to eat them up so here is that those neutrophils those neutrophils right they and that this nucleus debris right they will be forming they will be forming all this over here see these are the nucleus debris everything is clumped together now everything gets clumped clumped together see the clumps right this is because of the coagulative necrosis right the necrosis is damaged to the tissue and things start coagulating 
because it is to be removed right so body thinks ke are i am to doing good work but this is heart right this is heart see what happens when when these neutrophils they start working so sincerely and what damage they do right what damage they do first thing first because of the inflammatory reaction now even the pericardium is in inflammatory reaction right so everyone in the vicinity starts affecting so there is fibrous pericarditis right pericardium which is covering it leads to pericarditis and yet the bad part is after 3 to 14 days right now this is a delayed phase when person feels ke ha now the things are going good neutrophils they call their backup squad right neutrophils they'll say ke, okay we are cleaning up the system but now we need a better cleaner right things are things are settled so they will be calling the monocytes and i always say monocytes they are like those pacman right that gobblers right you know that game right that classical ooh, 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 right that that music right and they they keep on eating those dots right these are the pacmans monocytes they are like that right so so they they will come up now what will they do yeah pacman right what will they do see this is a very simple formation this is vegf vascular endothelial growth factor so they will feel yes this is a scar tissue right this is a scar tissue are this much this is all damaged right kitna damage so let's let's create this vascular endothelial growth factor endothelial growth factor so it will lead to formation of blood vessels right it will lead to formation of blood vessels okay so far so good right so they will be forming this nice red border right and we'll be able to see this thing right we'll just see it in histology also so here is the good blood vessels they are created right in the hope ke yes yes this is what we are doing is good fine but why are this this new blood vessels those macrophages because there was a call from neutrophils that okay backup squad you come down because the tissue damage is so much so you have to eat them right macrophages they will say at your service and they will enter into this system and they will say are itna damage chalo start eating finish them off and this is the process in which the macrophages they eat away because they are like vultures they are like vultures they are cleansers right they will say hum to acha kaam kar rahe hain right had this thing occurred at some some hand or everything right you'll find ke ha bad tissue has gone and everything is good but remember this is heart in heart once the tissue is damaged it is gone forever body never understand they macrophages they don't understand it they say ke bas <clears throat> boss we are called for cleansing start cleansing and they start the process of phagocytosis phagocytosis they start eating up the cell and what when they eat the entire thing this inside thing that becomes soft pulpy right so there is softening of that tissue when it is softening of this tissue this is the heart right and this heart is not stand standing silently it is constantly beating and then the wall starts becoming thin it leads to what is called as the free wall rupture it can rupture right so dangerous right that's the reason that why it is said that in case of myocardial infarction initial hours are so crucial that you don't let the damage go more because once things are damaged nothing can be done see over here this is this is how it would really look like the red border right? the red border this is this is where the all those new blood vessels right very enthusiastically they have started developing ah red border right chalo chalo blood vessels blood vessels good right those macrophages right they entered via this through those macrophages they said chalo eat start eating start attacking this dead tissue done right and then this tissue that is what is called as the softening so this white area is when the tissue has been softened right it has been eaten right because of the good work by macrophages right and why it happened because the 
vascular endothelial growth factor growth factor it said that in let the blood vessels grow because this is like no one was giving oxygen so i am giving oxygen so i am doing this thing in good faith okay monocytes have come and they have destroyed but now we go back to our anatomy this was the cusp right this was the cusp cusp was attached with those colda tendini right colda tendini right but those colda tendini they were controlled by they were controlled by papillary muscles right they were like this those papillary muscles and those papillary muscles there were also other portion which was called as the moderator bands right moderator bands moderator bands they are also sort of muscle so it was the signal which was coming from sa node to av node actually what they were doing they were sending the signals to these papillary muscles so when the papillary muscles contract right those strings would be pulled and the cusp would open right when and that's how things were continuing right for whole life but now the tissues are getting damaged so that damage is now leading to damage to these papillary muscles damage to these moderator bands and as they become soft as they become right say affected they lead to rupture these papillary muscles they rupture and this occurs after few days right and suddenly you will find when you auscultate you will find ke murmurs they have started appearing the new murmurs that's the reason that you need to auscultate patient very carefully repeatedly right just to just to anticipate that if anything of such thing is happening because if it leads to rupture mitral valve would prolapse and that will lead to mitral regurgitation now new new complication has started mitral regurgitation because this cusp is now useless there is no one to pull it back powerfully so it will just float right so the blood will start going into the reverse direction and this thing remember we are just on still two weeks only right less than two weeks right this thing can occur not it's not so that this occurs in every patient but it can it can so when you have got the rotation of car in cardiology you will find across that many of the patients they will be having even mr that right? they many of them will be having aneurysm pseudo aneurysm full aneurysm right will come to that but yes it can happen now 3 to 14 days 3 to 14 days it can lead to pseudo aneurysm now what aneurysm is that here is the wall right uh, just wait let me add one new page so that would be better <laughs> okay so here is here is the vessel wall right this is this is inside this is inside right now this particular vessel wall sometimes the whole wall right whole wall right it goes like this it protrudes right yeah chain of complications starting from stent insertion yes that's right right so so here it is there is weakening of the wall now you understand this right you know this that if the portion think it like that entire part is strong this entire part is strong right entire part is strong but this portion this portion is weak so blood to is inside right so it will start putting that pushing that weak wall so this wall will bulge slightly still the pressure is increasing it will bulge more it will bulge more it will bulge more and this is what really happens right so now this is the situation this is what is called as the true aneurysm true aneurysm true aneurysm means full thickness right this is full thick thickness of the wall full thickness right it goes over here there is pseudo aneurysm what pseudo aneurysm is is this our tissue damage is in this area right so this area is already damaged damage right and then due to the pressure right because this this tissue is softened so this tissue because of the pressure this damaged tissue right the damaged tissue it bulges now this is worst 
right? Because this this bulge is of damaged tissues, right? So it is just one layer, right? This is like only one layer of damaged tissues. Damaged tissues. So this is what is called as the pseudo aneurysm. Now pseudo aneurysm is more dangerous because in case of true aneurysm, the full thickness was going out. Right? So, it, it was able to sustain. Over here, it is only one layer of damaged tissue which can rupture any time. This is like a time bomb. right? Because think of that this is the chamber, one area which is, then there is a large amount of blood which is, which is really giving, giving pressure and that damaged tissue, the, because of pressure, it bulges. So, this is the pseudo aneurysm and that aneurysm right over here yeah so that aneurysm which is pseudo aneurysm only one layer and there is high risk there is high risk of rupture right and when these areas they rupture nothing can be done right it is like immediate death after two weeks right after 14 days 14 days passed now starts there is transcription of growth factor p right and the platelet derived growth factor all these growth factors they come into picture one after the other right and now they feel that this is platelet derived so let's form the collagen right let's form the collagen collagen can be formed right heart heart tissue they cannot be reformed but collagen can be formed so they'll say chalo let's do that that work now here is the heart heart muscle right myocyte and this is the area where the damage was, the scar tissue. Now, this scar tissue is now getting converted into collagen. So, let's say collagen is over here. Rest of the heart tissue is, is fine. We consider that it is fine and it is contractile, right? It is contracting. Okay. Now, the result, during contraction, this phase, because collagen, they cannot contract, right? With collagens, they won't contract. So, they'll be just flapping. If ruptured, then hemorrhage. Yeah, if ruptured, then huge hemorrhage, right? It is it is life-threatening. So, during contraction, during contraction, this one would contract, right? Because it is good. This collagen, it won't contract, right? So, it will lead to like a flapping curtain, right? Because it has got no power, right? It is just a collagen, right? So, this thing... Because it is collagen, it would stain pink, right? If you if you really take the tissue out and it is hypokinetic, hypokinetic, it won't move, it won't contract, right? There is no kinetic energy, won't contract, right? Won't contract. And that thing will lead to true aneurysm because all three layers, right? They are now bulge. But over here, it, it won't rupture that easily, right? But then something else happens because it is full thickness now that the rest of the layers, so they are there, right? So if you think it like that we have got all those layers and this is the area which was converted to collagen and as pressure builds, right? So there, there would be full thickness, all the layers, all the layers, right? Along with the collagen, now that is, that has been developed right that has been developed okay here it is something like this the full thickness aneurysm but over here we have got the collagen but then this is like a pouch right this is like a pouch so blood when comes it trickles and then it goes blood trickles over there and it goes because this is like a side pouch right when this thing occurs <clears throat> over there because this is hypocontractile it won't contract right it is hypocontractile so this is the side from where the thrombus can be formed thrombus a clot can form right and that clot when it is released this will be released in what it will be released in straight away aorta and this clot god knows where it will go right this is the blood clot and this clot because now you know from aorta if it lodges into the brain right so 
it leads to multiple calculation where it has lodged. If it goes into any other part of the body, it is going to create havoc. That's the reason, right? At multiple fronts you are fighting. How it will really look like? It will look like this. See, this is the histological image. Just a minute. Uh -huh. This collagen, they will be, they, they look pale, right? These collagen, these are the collagen areas, right? And see a few myocytes, all these are myocytes, where I am writing M, right? These are myocytes, they are contractile. Rest is all collagen, right? Massive destruction. So this is what really happens. So though, because it is full thickness aneurysm, so chances of rupture, they are very less. But because it is a stagnant thing, blood circulates and it will lead to this clot. So this is now another complication. right? So this is what really happens and all because of that burger, all because of that pizza, smoking, alcohol, right? All because of that thodi si maja and then this is the trouble for whole life. Cardiac arrhythmia, so this is like complications in post-MI, one to two days. There is ventricular tachycardia, right? Ventricular tachycardia. That is because sodium is trapped inside. It is calling, this is inside, it is calling lots of water inside and it leading to edema and that's potassium which is external, right? And it is leading to all arrhythmias, right? And this ventricular tachycardia is one of them. Then as things progress, fibrous pericarditis, tissue surrounding, infarct shows acute inflammation plus neutrophils. So now the neutrophils have come. Ke chalo, we take over, right? When neutrophils come, they will feel ki, yes, they are doing something very good. Free wall rupture, right? Papillary muscles, they rupture. So that leads to posterior medial papillary muscles because when the ventricles involved, the final is MR, mitral regurgitation. So wall has gone. Mitral wall goes, right? Because we are dealing with, because left ventricle is the commonest chamber in which this thing can occur. Then, worst is interventricular septum. Let's say if it is a septal infarct, right? So, there is, there is infarction. The, the worst thing, the very bad thing, because when the ventricle, then when the septum is involved, when the septum is involved, out this prognosis is still worse because if the IVS, interventricular septum ruptures, because macrophages will come very enthusiastically by the message of those neutrophils, they will come. Macrophages will say, Ke chalo, we start our work, right? Macrophages, macrophages will mediate structural degradation. They will break the, they will break the ventricular septum, right? They will eat away. That will become soft, ruptured. And now you have, you are, you are, you are managing in your patient left to right shunt. Now, this is another complication, right? Because now it is left to right shunt. And still just one week has passed. Right? So, that's why at times it becomes so difficult, right? When, when the complication occur. 3 to 14 days ventricular pseudoaneurysm. Now, that has come up. The ventricular wall because ventricle was also damaged, right? So, it can lead to pseudoaneurysm, right? So, there is high risk of rupture. Few days more, ventricular free wall rupture. And if that occurs, then that is out of question. Nothing can be done, right? Nothing can be done. It is even sudden death. Straight away, you will find that the, that the thorax is studded with so much of blood and it is instant death. Nothing, nothing can be done. Two weeks to several months, right? There is true ventricular aneurysm, right? Gradually it is forming, right? Gradually because that wall which has become weakened and it has, there is aneurysm and that blood, right? It is trickling, it is trickling, right? And dhire, 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 it is forming that clot. And then that clot, there is, there is a risk of neural thrombosis, right? That occurs. And... Ha, huh, that's right. This one is of collagen. That's right. This one is of collagen. This one. Yeah, that is of collagen. And that's why it is because it is it is hypoactive. It is hypokinetic. Right? Then comes the Dressler syndrome. This is autoimmune pericarditis because there is fibrous pericarditis. So then there is pericardial antigens, right? And there is formation of antibodies post-MI. So now the immune system, autoimmune system comes into picture. 
right? And they will say that yes, there is antigen antibody reaction at the pericardial because this pericardial antigen exposure occurs and post MI those antibody formation right? because it is like a defense system and it happens like that there is increase in aspiration, there is the chest pain and decreased in sitting posture. So when the patient breathes in, there is more pain, right? There is more pain. And in pericarditis, remember this, ST segment elevation is diffuse. ST segment elevation is diffuse, right? It is not pertaining to one. We have, we have talked about this previously also. But remember, in pericarditis, there is diffuse ST segment elevation. So if you see that just after, classically, after say two weeks to several months, patient has come up for the follow-up and you take the ECG and you'll find that ST segment is elevated, elevated in, in so many leads. Now remember, this patient is developing pericarditis, right? So for that, this tablet, colchicin, this is allopurinol, right? That is considered as very effective and it should be given prophylactically after any of the heart surgery so that patient never develops this pericarditis. None of the other painkillers should be given except the aspirin. NSAID is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So it is the aspirin, right? That is the safest, right? Cheap, but very safe. Pericardial effusion, right? Pericardial effusion, collection of fluid into the pericardial sac. That happens. Now, as things progress, right? Left ventricle is now not functioning properly, right? Left ventricle is not functioning properly. So, left ventricle will exert, right? He is not working. So, bichara left atrium, he was trying to push the blood. So, it will lead to that back pressure into the left atrium. From left, into the left atrium, the blood is coming from lungs, right? So, lungs, they will say, Kare yaar, blood le jao. Left atrial sac, that left ventricle is not working, so you keep the blood with you, right? I am not taking it. So, lungs would say, to main kya karun? They will say, ke, theek hai, pulmonary edema. Patient starts developing respiratory complications, right? Pulmonary edema. And that pulmonary edema leads to what's called as the pleural effusion. So, that's the reason that in, in, the, in the, when the patient comes for the follow-up, you need X-ray chest, a standard X-ray chest. Why? Because in X-ray chest, right, let's, when you draw, right, so that's the whole idea and, and that's the chest and what you see is, this is, this is diaphragm, right, and this junction, this one, is called as the costophrenic angle. Correct? Costophrenic angle. So, this is like right costophrenic angle and the left costophrenic angle. There would be obliteration of this angle. Right? There is, there would be obliteration. So, why? Because fluid is getting collected and that fluid, it will always gravitate. Right? So, classical pattern, you will see this portion. It is, it is, it would be white. It would be, it would be like this. You won't because it is its density would be more so this it will look like this right fluid over here and over here also this angle is lost completely you won't be able to see this angle and this is the classical symptom of bilateral pleural effusion right this is bilateral bilateral pleural effusion so when there is you just look at the x-ray Right? And you find that there is bilateral pleural effusion. Immediately you know that it is the left ventricle who is now giving way. So pressure has been, say, back pressure to left atrium and that is what is affecting the lungs. Right, So that, that's the reason there is pulmonary edema. Even if you tap this, it will be recollected. So that's why when we'll be studying respiratory system, at that point, after learning the respiratory system, we'll be starting with the lungs and then we'll see the condition. And then at one point, we'll see that how to manage both the systems together. That is what is called as the cardiorespiratory management. Right? So, that's it for today. So, this is like 
an attempt to integrate medicine and pathology and histology and our anatomy and the pharmacology because when patient comes no one would ask that do you know pathology or do you know pharmacology it is like can you manage this patient and it is at that point all the reports which are in front of you things should run in your mind that okay this is the ecg this is what is happening let's look at the x-ray this is what is happening let's look at the lab reports and that's how you can help him or her the best right thank you so much for your patience i really appreciate it right thank you and wish you a very happy weekend well yesterday we lost the match but let's hope we we win further matches right thank you and bye bye revision you want revision i don't mind high speed yes everyone because we have you see it's like you guys are sitting since almost 2 hours i know i was i was just talking to someone i said they they are so sincere means for full 2 hours right they they really set and 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 patiently they they listen to everything yes everyone because siddhant you are the only one <laughs> should we go for revision high speed 557 five, minutes acha chalo chalo let's start let's do it mm -hmm. ओके ओके सो हियर इज टॉपिक माइकार्ड इन्फेक्शन एंड दीज आर द टॉपिक्स व्हिच विल बी रिवाइजिंग एंजाइना पेक्टोरिस स्टार्टिंग विद दिस राइट स्ट्रेंगल स्ट्रेंगल टू द चेस्ट लाइक पाइथन राइट एंड पेन इज रिड्यूस्ड पेन इज बाय रिड्यूस्ड ब्लड फ्लो लैक ऑफ ऑक्सीजन सो दैट लीड्स टू इशेमिया देर आर थ्री टाइप्स स्टेबल अनस्टेबल एंड प्रिंसमेटन स्टेबल एंजाइना क्रॉनिक एंजाइना दैट्स अ मोस्ट कॉमन पॉइंट टू टेक कैरी होम इज टिल सेवेंटी परसेंट वन माइट नॉट इवन नो दैट देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम एंड ऑल दिस थिंग बिकॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द प्लैक प्लैक इज एथ्रोस्किलोसिस वेन द कैलिबर इट सेल्फ इज रिड्यूस्ड सो दैट लेस ब्लड पासिस पेन गोज अवे विद रेस्ट कम्स बैक ऑन एक्जर्शन सो दैट मीन्स देर इज प्रॉब्लम बट वेल बी अलर्ट दिस इज द प्लैक विच इज गॉट टू पार्ट सॉफ्ट एंड हार्ड हार्ड इज हार्ड फाइब्रस कैप्सूल and it takes time to develop this soft part is combination of fat and cholesterol protein wbc calcium all right things to remember left ventricle is more affected because left ventricle has got thicker myocardium thicker myocardium means the coronary artery has to pass through this entire myocardium till it reaches to the endocardium and supplies so that's why thicker myocardium that means there would be more chances of its compression leading to subendocardium ischemia that releases adrenaline and bradykinin and then there is pain sensation that pain which goes into the chest pain and referred to left arm left jaw pain in the back pain in the shoulder pain in the scapular region and all this is because of the same dorsal root ganglia ecg changes just remember it is the st depression to start with and it st elevation as it grows as the condition worsens right so subendothelial ischemia that is because of the lack of oxygen what will you do always keep these two tablets tablet sorbitrate and tablet aspirin keep it even at home right it increases the window of survival from 30 minutes to straight away 3 to in some cases even up to 4 hours aspirin is to be chewed never tell him to swallow right never ever just chew sorbitrate sublingual right sublingual just put it under the tongue it will melt within within few seconds right we'll we'll discuss and just in one sentence i say you will bypass the liver metabolism when you take it sublingually right so it will be coming into circulation instantly otherwise when it goes into the digestive system it has to go via the via liver via the portal circulation and then it comes into the circulation so it takes time so by sublingual it will be much faster same way aspirin just chew it right unstable angina unpredictable type of acute coronary syndrome it occurs at rest right this is how it differs again relieved by sublingual nitroglycerin sorbitrate but not fully sorbitrate is How much? Five five mg, five mg, right? It is 
it that tablet is so cute it is a heart shaped tablet right it is a heart shaped tablet the sorbitrit heart shaped white color heart shaped tablet very small tablets right but uh, do keep even see even tomorrow i'll be running there is a marathon right so in every marathon i i do keep the sorbitrit with me so in case if someone has got problem at least we can help right sorbitrate and aspirin they are always in my pouch okay so coming back to this 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 yeah so thrombus formation right that thing can later on this thing can lead to thrombus formation st segment depression and elevation elevation at a later stage right this is what really happens and the t wave inversion t wave gets inverted in the initial stage there are no cardiac biomarkers elevated ldh troponin and ckmb they are all normal prince metal angina angina is at rest comes in cycles one after the another by by vasospasm contraction of vascular smooth muscles treatment calcium channel blocker right verapamil and diltiazem we have already talked about it never give never give don't give propranolol right this is a beta blocker but this is a non selective beta blocker it will block both b1 and b2 right so propranolol tenolol timolol never ever to be given right because class 2 non selective beta blocker it acts on blood vessels it will lead to vasospasm it will also lead to peripheral vasoconstriction worst right the vasospasm and the vasoconstriction peripheral vasoconstriction heart pound sa bilkul thande right and and it would be a like a panicky situation on top of it it is the platelet thromboxin txa2 that will lead to vasoconstriction and it will lead to form lead to formation of the clot so all layers of heart are affected that is called as the transmural ischemia and in that case we'll get st segment elevation in our patient that this was a brief discussion about the beta uh, receptors beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 1 that is for the heart and kidneys for heart it affects in such a way because this is fight so we need to pump the blood better so increase av conduction and increase the force of the contraction that's what it is really done this leads to increase cardiac output right so that blood pressure in increases at the same time on kidneys juxtaglomerular cells there also these are the same beta 1 receptors so it leads to a kicking off renin angiotensin systems which leads to increased blood pressure so there is increased blood pressure because of renin angiotensin system and the increased cardiac output this is a joint effort of beta 1 so that we can fight beta 2 beta 2 tells that okay lungs lungs will need will give you more oxygen so bronchodilatation right smooth muscles so they lead to vasodilation right vessels are dilated so now entire body is red hot ready to fight beta 3 lipolysis let chalo energy le aao right lipolysis fat starts breaking down right there is no time to go for the washroom to fight right so that's why bladder is said that okay you relax right so that you can accumulate more urine and the urge to go to washroom dies right and the pathology of mi lack of oxygen rich right death of myocytes and these are the this is where the things change because at any other position if there is tissue damage so it really repairs but it is the heart and brain in brain also there is coagulative necrosis right when we'll be talking about the neurophysiology there also it can occur because once brain is dead to so gone right the brain tissues they don't regenerate so over here talking about the heart atherosclerosis plaque clotting fa- clotting process and it leads to block one important clinical thing and that is st emi stemi and non stemi right the st elevation myocardial infarction that means when there is total block there is full thickness of myocardial wall and that is what is called as the transmural ischemia st segment elevated while in case of partial block that is n st emi there is sub endocardial ischemia right only one layer is affected so in this case you will be getting st segment depression and not the elevation elevation comes only when it is transmural full thickness right these are some of the examples and risk factors now you see this page right now this page really is motivating right because say avoidable things smoking high blood pressure diabetes obesity high cholesterol couch potato right watching all those netflix channels and eating those potato chips and and those media wala they they keep on showing you those potato chips advertisement also just watch the back side of the rapper and you'll be scared ki itna kachra 
and that also after paying so much right seriously instead of eat eat almonds eat pista right they are much cheaper as compared to the cost which you are paying for these potatoes and all those faltu things seriously just compare it right that that this much these many wafers and costing so much calculate it on per kilogram base you will find that almonds they are cheaper seriously just figure it out and then the alcohol and the stress level so proper lifestyle that is so 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 important non avoidable family history don't be scared but do remember right so be cautious and all powerful lion hearted males right it is okay to cry right okay to express right signs and symptoms acute chest pain which is lasting more than 20 minutes it is retrosternal radiating to left arm jaw shoulder and this is what is called as the gabrahat right actually i don't know about abroad right where they there is there they must be having some word but in 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 our clinical practice when we were writing the case paper so we used to write exactly this when we used to represent in that way that patient started feeling gabrahat at 7:30 pm and informed the neighbor because there is no other word which is absolutely appropriate for this gabrahat right and it is that scary when you watch it right it is bad really bad so there is dyspnea fatigue nausea vomiting feeling of fullness indigestion and diaphoresis this is to don't forget right patient would be heavily perspiring right literally drenched with 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 perspiration pasine se tar badar right diagnosis lab test these are the cardiac markers ckmb right this is creatinine in kinase this is non specific heart and because it is in heart and skeletal both so you will never be able to judge whether the damage is because of heart or because of the muscles but that this is the normal range 5 to 25 international units per liter and this is ck bb this is just i wrote it right just to know so that when we'll be discussing neuro at that point this will come as a reference lactate dehydrogenase ldh this is 140 to 280 units per per liter and troponin one very specific very very sensitive that is normally it is less than 0.04 nanogram per ml so less right so less all these things they are well sitting inside comfortably into the myocyte but when the damage they come out into the public troponin right it is more specific ldh rises very rapidly falls very early not specific to heart muscle and this is from lymphatics it comes to vena system to iv blood this is the graph right troponin rises 2 to 4 hours high and then by the end of one day right it its level drop and then it sustains for 7 to 10 days while in case of ckmb which is also called as the cpkmb it is one and the same thing phosphokinase myocyte binding right creatine phosphokinase myocyte binding so it takes one day and then it comes down by the second day when this is happening right when this is happening for ckmb watch for that if there is any another peak if there is development of another peak that means it is the second mi right for the ecg you watch for st elevation q waves inverted t wave left bundle branch block left bundle branch block right because the electrical system is also giving way led most commonly affected let the right, left anterior descending then right coronary artery right main coronary artery and left circumflex artery so these are the percentage this is what we talked about lbb that qrs is prolonged it has to be right because now the damaged tissue to current will go marela marela right dheere dheere it will go and on from the v1 perspective you will find that qrs is downward deflection because this is the tissue this is the tissue over here that this is the right side right because our left side to is not generating anything so it is this tissue when the current it will be like as if it is going away from the v1 so in v1 you start getting this classical w pattern and in the v6 this classical m pattern right these are the typical of lbbb left bundle branch block so here it is st elevation where in which leads we are watching the st elevation so commonest one which we see that is the right coronary artery that would be involved when it is 3 Two, three, and AVF, and circumflex when it is on the left lateral side, right? These are the areas. But this is the key. 
V1, V2, the entroceptal V3, V4, V5, V6, right? See, and as entroceptal to apical to lateral and one AVL is absolute lateral and then two, three AVF, it is just the inferior. V7, V9, the posterior part. If you remember this, if you remember this, right? When I'll be showing you the ECGs, just by the look that where is this ST elevation and you will be able to figure out that this, the myocardial infarction is in which area, which part of the heart is affected, right? This is like a key. Same thing, right? Then treatment oxygen, high pressure in acute analgesic, morphine, anticoagulants, antiplatelets, aspirin and clopidogrel, they are the best. Clopidogrel is a wonderful topic, right? We'll take it in detail when we'll be talking about the pharmac part, especially. Beta blocker, metapropyl, right? That is what we'll use because it is selective. Yes, we talked about it, that propranolol and timolol is not to be used because they are blocking both the things, beta 1 and beta 2, right? Statins, alorvastatin, that is used because it will simply inhibit HMG-CoA reductase. HMG-CoA reductase, this is one of the enzyme. This is an enzyme which will, which is used for the conversion of precursor of cholesterol into the cholesterol that is mevalonate and if you stop it so then the cholesterol production is decreased evolution of mi 0 to 4 hours no changes take some time for enzyme leakage but arrhythmia can occur the reason behind that oxygen is less oxygen is given less so heart goes into anaerobic mode there is decreased atp decreased atp will affect our Beautiful sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump is affected. So sodium will be trapped inside the cell. Water would be attracted and it will lead to swelling. Right. The potassium who is outside it becomes notorious and it starts doing all those riots in the form of arrhythmias. Right. 4 to 24 hours early coagulative necrosis. So now the tissue yet started getting eaten up. There is pale appearance because this is tetrazoleum stain, right? It will bind with LDH strongly, but now there is no tissue. So no LDH, no binding. So it looks pale, right? When they spill out, this is due to ischemic injury. Hypoxia, hypoxia, inducible factor, HIF, that leads to stimulation. Because whenever there is hypoxia, it will lead to VEGF. VEGF will very enthusiastically say, chalo, chalo, blood vessels banao. Right? It will make blood vessels. So that polymorphs can be called out. In polymorphs, a special team, neutrophils. Chalo, neutrophils, you come. And important, that reperfusion injury. Otherwise, so it is good if it happens at another area. But over here, reperfusion injury. Blood comes, blood comes into that infected area, which is already damaged, right? And those neutrophils, they start using oxygen and they create reactive oxygen species, which will be more damaging, right? Calcium, now calcium comes out because RE, reticular endothelial system, it has broken, calcium is released. It leads to contraction, lack of ATP, right? There is damage means it will contract but it won't relax, right? So it leads to formation of this contraction band necrosis. Very classical picture, very classical, right? One to three days, coagulation necrosis. Now to, they start eating really bad, right? And, and the clumping of nucleus and this is all damaged tissue, right? This is, this is a totally damaged tissue, right? Massive damaged. So nuclear debris, nucleus, nuclear broken, leads to inflammatory reaction, right? That is even now the pericardium is involved. Still neutrophils, they feel like they have not done enough work that they place a call to monocytes and monocytes, they come up with their inventory, right? Now monocytes have come. Meantime, this VEGF, they say, Ke chalo, we make blood vessels. Now blood vessels are made, so that would be the path for these macrophages. So these vultures, they attack. And they say, Ke chalo, scar tissue, that is useless for the body, kha jao, right? That leads to, they just eat up. It is called as the phagocytosis or the cleansing process. But in the process, it becomes soft, free wall rupture, right? Free wall rupture. So this is how the picture looks like. It is softening in the red border. Red border is when the blood vessels, because of the VEGF have developed. And this is the, softening our cusp then these are the cauda tendini and these are the papillary muscles and the and the moderator band 
they are damaged. When they are damaged, it leads to rupture of capillary muscles, mitral valve prolapse, mitral regurgitation. 3 to 14 days, pseudoaneurysm. Only one layer, high risk of rupture because it is this damaged portion now which is which is protruding. So it can easily damage, right? Because this is the damaged portion which has protruded. This thing can rupture easily. And when we say full thickness, so that means the is called as the true, true aneurysm yet to come. After two days, transcription of growth factor B, platelet-derived growth factor, and it leads to laying down of the collagen. Now, this collagen, collagen is, is telling that I can't contract. Rest of the muscles, you contract. And during contraction, they behave like a non-active curtain. But it generates pressure and it leads to formation of true aneurysm, right? So in true aneurysm, this area is hypocontractile. So there is a mural thrombus, mural thrombus. And one day it is released in the form of embolus, right? That is released into the aorta. This is how the picture would look like, the collagen and the myocytes, right? And in the complication, finally, there is cardiac arrhythmias, one to two days, ventricular tachycardia, logic is here. That sodium remains inside, potassium goes outside and does all Gundagiri, right? One to three days, fibrous pericarditis, bizarre pericardium is now involved, tissue surrounding infarct shows acute inflammation and those neutrophils, right, they feel that we are doing good work, they come, free wall rupture, papillary muscle rupture and that leads to mitral regurgitation, right? Worst, if the patient is having septal in fact, so then IVS rupture, interventricular septum is ruptured, macrophage mediated structural degradation, left to right shunt, right? So now that is to be maintained, managed. About at around two weeks, ventricular pseudoaneurysm, high risk of rupture. And if this goes, game is over. Five to 14 days, ventricular free wall rupture, sudden death, right? True ventricular aneurysm, it takes time, right? Because this, this, is full thickness. <clears throat> so you have normal wall motion, risk of neural thrombosis. Then comes the autoimmune pericarditis, in which that is called as the Dressler syndrome, pericardial antigen antibody reaction occurs, right? And in this case, chest pain is on inspiration, there is pain and decreases when the when person sits. This is the point to be taken at home that in such cases, then the patient has come for the follow-up. You take the ECG and you'll find ST segment elevation at multiple leads, right? Don't be alarmed. This is pericarditis, right? And if you have started tablet colchicin, that is basically it is allopurinol, so then this thing can be avoided. Always give aspirin as an SAID, not anything else, right? Watch for the pericardial effusion, that is the, and, and you will be able to even auscultate it. Left ventricular failure, will lead to left load on left atrium, will lead to pulmonary edema and that will lead to bilateral pleural effusion in which there would be obstruction of both the costophrenic angle, right and left costophrenic angle and that is what is called as the bilateral pleural effusion. This is one of the basic thing which is to be taken in the follow-up, right? So that was our discussion on MI. Right? Wish you a very happy, wish you a very healthy weekend, right? Do exercise well, eat good, right? And no kachra. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. See you on Monday.